so in today's lecture we'll be looking at the topic of rural development okay and by reading this chapter we'll be learning about and to understand the rural development and the major issues associated with it appreciate how crucial the development of rural areas is for indian overall india's overall development understand the critical role of credit and marketing systems in rural development learn about the importance of diversification of productive activities to sustain livelihoods understand the significance of organic farming in sustainable development okay so according to mahatma gandhi the concept of real progress was that uh, it was not simply the expansion and growth of the industrial urban centers but mainly the development of villages so according to gandhian socialism or gandhi's view point it was like there should be centers of development in uh, or small clusters all these small clusters should act as the development for the village community so development should start from the village areas that was gandhi's concept or gandhi's vision okay this idea of village development being at the center of the overall development of the nation is relevant even today okay so why should we attach such significance to the rural development when we see around us fast growing cities with large industries and modern information technology hubs it is because more than 2/3 of india's population depends on agriculture that is yet to become productive enough to provide for them one fourth of the rural india still lives in abject poverty that is the reason why we have to see a developed rural india if our nation has to realize real progress so there is such a lot of population share in the rural areas and these people need development these people should be brought into the front lines so into for that reason rural development is a necessary feature okay so some of the areas which are challenging and need fresh in initiatives for development of rural india include development of human resources including literacy more specifically female literacy education and skill development then health is there addressing both sanitation and public health see both these topics we have dealt with in the previous class in human capital development so go through that lecture also then you will have a better understanding of uh, how our education sector and health sector are working are performing okay and all other aspect related to human capital and human resource development okay then land forms land reforms uh, development of productive resources of each locality infrastructure development like electricity irrigation credit marketing in transport facilities including construction of village roads and feeder of roads to nearby feeder roads to nearby highways facilities for agriculture research and extension and information dissemination dissemination special measures for elevation of poverty and bringing about significant improvement in the living conditions of the weaker sections of the population emphasizing access to productive employment opportunities so proper employment opportunities should be also be created okay all these means that people engaged in farm and non farm activities in rural areas have to be provided with various means that help them increase productivity okay or we can say something that can diversify their productivity okay and uh, now we will be looking at all the uh, aspects that we discussed earlier in detail so first one is credit and marketing in rural areas okay growth of rural economy depends on primarily in the infusion of capital so uh, when we look at the rural community it is basically dependent on farming yes but farming the returns are only generated once you sold your so sell your produce in the market so it takes a lot of time so in between there will be festivals there will be other urgent needs for the family there will be educational fees all these aspects are there for the farmer to cope up with he cannot do with one time uh, how the returns that he got from the last year's produce more money should be generated by him so he usually what happens these farmers they borrow from various sources to meet their initial investment of seeds fertilizers implements and other family expenses of marriage death religious ceremonies etc at the point or at the time of independence we have seen in our history chapters in gs1 series only we have discussed about the 
conditions of money lenders how much interest they were putting into do see all those video videos so it will give you a correct picture of how is our economy at that point of time okay how much interest they were putting on on this poor uh, peasants all these things are beautifully dealt in that lecture okay at the time of independence money lenders traders exploited small and marginal traders and landless laborers by lending to them a high rate high interest rate and by manipulating the accounts to keep them in debt trap so continuously uh, they were made to pay back the money even though they paid back the principal amount still they had to pay interest that kind of trap was uh, put down by the money lenders so a change occurred after 1969 when india adopted social banking and multi agency approach so concept of socialism was uh, increasing in our governmental structure or governmental policy so before we go into that we will look, look into what is kudumbasri kudumbasri is a women oriented community based poverty redu- reduction program implemented in kerala in 1995 the thrift and credit society was started as a small savings bank for poor women with the objective to encourage saving the thrift and credit society mobilized 1 crore rupees as thrift savings these societies have been acclaimed as the largest informal banks in asia in terms of participation and savings mobilized so these people these are kudumbasri and all they organize a uh, group of uh, women in a locality and they arrange uh, they make pickles they make other agriculture products and they sell it in their own markets their own stores so thus generating profit or income for this uh, women okay and national bank of agriculture and the rural development uh, was set up in 1982 as an apex body to coordinate the activities of all institutions involved in the rural financing so proper rural financing was and put as a aim in 1964 by our uh, by the government the green and other social initiatives were taken so that better the finances and uh, uh, more resources will be given to the farmers then we see the uh, green revolution as it was an harbinger of major changes in the credit system as it led to the diversification of portfolio of rural credit towards production oriented lending okay, the institutional structure of rural banking today consists of a set of multi agency institutions okay uh, what all type of uh, banking structures are there in the rural areas we have commercial banks regional rural banks we have cooperatives land developmental bank land development banks they are expected to dispense adequate credit at cheaper rate of interest recently self help group or sg sgs okay have emerged to fulfill the gap in the formal credit system because the formal credit delivery mechanism has not only see in the uh, formal credit suppose we go to a private bank or a nationalized bank it is very hard for the poor farmers to get a loan uh, in turn if we go to a group suppose we have a 10 member group and in that 10 member group and we collect uh, okay we are having 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay okay 10 member group is there and in that 10 member group suppose all these people pool in some money okay all these 10 people pool in uh, 10 rupees each so what happens there will be ultimately 100 rupees with them okay suppose one single person in the group is a, uh, has an urgent need and is a, he has a need of about 100 rupees what happens he can collect this 100 rupees from the group and with a lower rate of interest lower rate of interest he can repay the money back at after some time so that is a benefit of self help groups and also they also promote another uh, economic or innovative ideas they also provide this kind of cheaper loans uh, all these aspects are, can be provided by the self help groups okay now rural banking a critical analysis rapid expansion of the banking system had a positive effect on the rural farms and non farm pro- output income and employment especially after the green revolution it helped farmers to avail services and credit facilities and a variety of loans for meeting their production needs so the farmers need money to run their production in run their agricultural needs okay so all these things 
Uh, once the government is able to fund these farmers, uh, the crisis of the farmers to some extent, the dependence on huge money lenders decreases. So they have money and they, if even if some produce, uh, less produce is product uh, is given at one season, uh, if they have money, they can invest in better yield, high yield seed, uh, seeds in the next season. So in turn, they, they, will be, they will be having the money to repay the loans. Okay. Famines became events of the past. We have now achieved food security, which is reflected in the abundant buffer stocks of grains. However, this is a banking system has also its uh, demerits also uh, all not well with our banking system with the possible exception of the commercial banks other former institutions have failed to develop a culture of deposit mobilization so people are lending money but there is no habit of what deposits or savings agricultural loan default rates have been chronically high okay now we need to look at why farmers fail to pay back loans this allows that the farmers are deliberately refusing to pay back loans. What could be the reasons? Okay, thus expansion and promotion of the rural banking sector has taken a back seat after reforms. To improve the situation, in recent years, all the adults have encouraged to open banks, bank accounts, as part of the scheme known as Jantan Yojana. Okay, Jantan Yojana is another important governmental scheme that you need to study when you are preparing for the exam, as well as uh, have a knowledge a general knowledge of this scheme because it is uh, very beneficial okay those bank holders can get one to two lakh accidental insurance coverage and overdraft facilities for rupees how much ten thousand rupees and get their wages old age pension and other social security payments of the government transferred to bank accounts there is no one single bank account for all the government benefits we can say like it like that Okay, there is no need to keep minimum bank balance. Why the government is doing this? To in order to in, uh, develop a saving culture among the people. Okay, and this led to what? This led to more than 40 crore people opening bank accounts. Indirectly, it has promoted thrift habits and efficient allocation of financial resources. And the government were able to mobilize a fund of about 1,40,000 crores. Okay, now we will look at to the next sector that is agricultural market system. Okay, we have seen credit system, now agriculture market system. Okay, have you ever looked yourself how food grains, vegetables, fruits that we consume daily come from different parts of the country? Okay, mechanism through which these goods reach different places depend on the market channels. The network of transport system that are there in order to facilitate the produce from the farms to reach our marketplace. Okay. Agriculture marketing is a process that involves assembling, storage, processing, transportation, packaging, gradual and distribution of different agriculture communities across the country. Okay. So prior to independence, farmers while selling their produce to traders suffered from faulty way and manipulation of accounts. Farmers who could not have, uh, who did not have the required information once the price is prevailing, these before in, uh, before independence or we can say before the reforms happening in the agriculture, the farmers were manipulated. They had no idea about the proper prices in the market. They wanted a certain money or certain need of money was there for the farmers. So they will sell their market, in, uh, they'll, they'll produce in a hurry and they get whatever money they can get from the, uh, from the, uh, from these people who collect. Okay. They also did not have proper storage facilities to keep back their produce for selling later at a better price. Suppose the price goes down at a time and they, they said, oh, they are not selling at, we are not selling at this point. After some time, when the price goes up, we are going to sell it. That kind of option was also not available before the independence or we can say before the reforms happening in, in our agriculture sector. Okay. Do you know even today more than 10% of the food grains produced in farms are wasted due to lack of storage. Therefore, government intervention became necessary. So, now we are looking at the social aspect in our government restructure, in our economy also. See, these are the roles of the government. We have seen capital in the initial chapters of our in uh, our economy. We have seen capitalistic approach. We have seen a mi mixed economy. In which capitalist aspect is also there and socialist aspect is also there. So, now this is an example of socialistic aspect. 
of it. Therefore, government intervention became necessary to regulate activities of the private traders. Okay, now let us discuss four such measures that were initiated to improve the marketing aspect. First step was the regulation of markets to create orderly and transparent marketing conditions. By and large, this policy benefited farmers as well as consumers. However, there is still a need to develop more than 27,000 rural periodic markets as regulated marketplaces to re realize the full potential of rural market. Okay, the huge market potential is there uh, still needed in our agriculture or farming sector. Okay, now second component is that uh, the component is provision of physical infrastructure facilities like roads, railways, warehouses, uh, go downs, cold storages and processing units. The current infrastructure facilities are quite inadequate to meet the growing de demand and need to be improved. Okay. And realizing another aspect is cooperative marketing is realizing fair fair prices for farmers products. It's the third so fair prices for farmers products is the third aspect of the government initiative. The success of milk cooperatives in transforming the social and economic landscape of Gujarat and some other parts of country is a testimony of the role of cooperatives. We can see uh, in, we have Amul, another cooperative society. Uh, all, we have Milma in Kerala. Uh, all these as all these cooperative societies are very good examples in which a cooperative society can uh, give their input in the economy. Okay. However, cooperatives have received a setback during the recent past due to the inadequate coverage of farmer members' lack of appropriate link between marketing and processing cooperatives and inefficient financial management. The fourth element is policy instruments like assurance of minimum support prices for agriculture products, maintenance of buffer stocks of wheat and rice by Food Corporation of India, and distribution of food grains and sugar through public distribution systems. These instruments are aimed at protecting the income of farmers and providing food grains at a subsidized rate to the poor. However, despite government intervention, private trade by moneylenders, rural political elites, big merchants and big farmers predominates our agriculture market. Okay. Now, the need of government intervention is eminent, particularly when a large share of agriculture products is handled by private sector. Agriculture marketing has come a long way with the intervention of the government in various forms. Some scholars argue that the commercialization of agriculture offers tremendous scope for farmers to earn higher incomes provided the government intervention is restricted okay now emerging alternate marketing channels we are looking into it okay as we have realized if farmers directly sell their produce to consumers it increases their incomes suppose there are no in middlemen in between the farmer and the consumer the farmer can directly fix the price am i right some examples of these channels are Apni Mandi, that's in Punjab, Haryana, and Rajasthan, okay, on the northwestern areas of India. Okay, now Hadaspar Mandi in Pune, Raitu Bazaar, Vegetable and Fruits Market in Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana, the Uravar Sandhis in uh, Farmer Market in Tamil Nadu. Further, several national and multinational fast food chains are increasingly entering into contact. Suppose we can say uh, another example is Walmart. Walmart is another institution or another company that deals directly with the uh, cultivators or producers, we can say. Okay. So, such it is argued that such ar arrangements will help in reducing the price risk of farmers and would also expand the markets of farm products. Okay. That is another argument that is risen. Okay. In 2020, Parliament passed three agricultural farm laws to reform agriculture marketing system okay while some section of farmers support these reforms there are people who are opposed also so uh, we will be doing a video about farm laws soon so uh, that will uh, help you to clarify what is the chaos behind all these things and what is the uh, positive aspect as well as the negative aspect of farm laws now diversification into productive activities diversification includes two aspects 
one relates to the change in cropping pattern and the other relates to shift of workforce from agriculture to other allied activities non agriculture and non agriculture sector the need for diversification arises from the fact that there is greater risk in depending exclusively on farming for livelihood diversification towards new areas is necessary not only to reduce the risk for the agriculture sector but also provide productive sustainable livelihood options for the rural people see in the case of agriculture or farming uh, in a year it can uh, generally create about 6 months of employment after the rest 6 months the uh, the rural people are unemployed these people don't have any job or proper income sources so what they will do they work either in a uh, big landlords fields some people again do uh, farming the second uh, uh, second harvest will be done so uh, or second sowing season will be done for some people and there are most a vast majority of people they won't do anything okay so uh, they won't be having proper income sources during that six month period so uh, now we have some 100 day work programs done by government in which 100 day work will be given by the government to these kind of people okay that is another extra input that i am giving you but you have to check on it also to get no uh, more details about it also so another important thing is much of the agriculture employment activities are concentrated in the kharif season that is june july season okay now we can say on the rice cultivating areas but during the rabi season in areas where there are inadequate irrigation facilities it becomes difficult to find gainful employment therefore expansion in the sectors is essential to provide supplementary gainful employment and in realizing higher levels of income for rural rural people to overcome poverty and other tribulation hence there is a need to focus on allied activities suppose we say you are you are a sugar planter so you have cultivated sugar then we can sell it as ethanol as jaggery as we are we are seeing in the picture all these by products are developed from the sugar cane okay so all this aspect all this kind of products are created from one single crop and uh, jaggery the jaggery creation can be done after harvest and throughout for a long time so this can be considered as a allied activity of the farming sector now tamil nadu women in agriculture another extra uh, input tamil nadu women in agriculture was a project initiated in the late 1980s in tamil nadu to train women in latest agriculture technologies and in organic farming it encouraged women to actively participate in rising agriculture productivity and family income at a farm women's group in tiruchirappalli run by antony ammal trained women were successfully making and selling vermicompost and earning money from this venture many other farm women's group were creating savings in their group by functioning like mini banks through a micro credit system with accumulated savings they promote small scale household activities like mushroom cultivation soap manufacture doll making other income generating activities there could be similar incentives in your area so in your area also you can look into it so all these examples are given because when you write the mains mains exams the women the life of women or women empowerment is such an important topic in the uh, syllabus so all these examples examples of kudumbasri examples of uh, tamil nadu women in agriculture these can be uh, used as examples when you write your essay or when you write your mains answer okay uh, it will give an extra uh, extra understanding for the person who checks okay as agriculture is already overcrowded crowded a major now we are looking at non agriculture non farming sector a major proportion of the increasing labor force needs to find alternate employment opportunities in other non farm sectors non farm economy has several segments in it some possess dynamic linkages that permit healthy growth while others are in sustenance low productivity propositions the dyn dynamic subsectors include agro processing industries food processing industries leather industry tourism etc these are sectors which are potential but seriously lack infrastructure 
and support include traditional home based industries like pottery crafts and looms etc majority of the rural women find employment in agriculture while men gradually look for non farm employment in recent times women have also begun looking for non farm employment now we will look at animal husbandry in india the farming community uses mixed to crop livestock farming system cattle goats fowl a widely held species livestock production provides increased stability in income food security transport fuel and nutrition for the family without disrupting other food producing activities today livestock sector alone provides alternate livelihood options to over 70 million small and marginal farmers including landless laborers a significant number of women also find employment in the livestock sector okay these are uh, also the statistics part uh, which i am skipping you can read through it now we come to the fishery sector the fishing community regards water body as mother or provider the water body consisting of sea oceans rivers lakes natural aquatic ponds streams etc are therefore an integral and life giving source for the fishing community in india after progressive increase increase in budgetary allocations and introduction of new technologies in fisheries and aquaculture the development of fisheries have come a long way presently fish production from inland sources contribute about 65% of the total value of food pro- fish production and the balance 35% comes from marine sector okay this can also be these statistics can also be added in your main chance of writing if the question arises so today total fish production accounts for 0.9% of the total gdp okay the main fish producing areas are kerala andhra pradesh west bengal gujarat maharashtra and tamil nadu all these states are major producers of fish although these people contribute a significant amount to the gdp what happens their families of fish workers are poor rampant underemployment is there low per capita earnings so these are the problems faced or what or how is the situation of fishing community in india in a single answer is asked question is asked answer is share of fish worker families are poor large share of fish worker families are poor rampant under employment is there low per capita earnings absence of mobility of labor to other sectors and high rate of illiteracy and indebtedness are some of the major problems fish community face today even though women are not involved in active fishing they were also in, they women in many areas in uh, in kerala in tamil nadu all these areas women are the ones who sell fish in the market okay so there is a large a large number of women are also who involved in the fishing industry now we come to horticulture horticulture blessed with varying climate and soil conditions india has adopted growing of diverse horticultural crops such as fruits vegetables tubers crop tuber crops like tapioca sweet potato all these things over potato and uh, flowers medicinal and aromatic plants spices and plantation crops these crops play a vital role in providing food and nutrition besides r- addressing employment concerns horticulture sector contributes nearly one third of the value of agriculture output and 6% to the gdp india has emerged as a world leader in producing variety of fruits like mangoes bananas coconuts cashew nuts and a number of spices and is the second largest producer of fruits and vegetables economic condition of many farmers engaged in horticulture have improved and has become a means of improving livelihood in many unprivileged classes horticulture basically means proper farm farming uh, or proper farms like a systematic uh, cultivation of a certain kind of crop okay Uh, like harvesting nursery maintenance hybrid seed production tissue culture propagation of fruits and flowers and food processing are highly wait, oh wait oh, highly remunerated employment options for women in rural areas the term in terms of numbers and uh, our livestock population is quite impressive but its productivity is quite low as compared to other countries it requires improved technology and promotion of good breeds of animals to enhance productivity improved veterinary care and credit facilities to small and marginal farmers and landless laborers 
would enhance sustainable livelihood options through livestock production. Production of fisheries has also already increased substantially. And uh, there are some environmental issues also like uh, overfishing, over uses of fertilizers, eutrophication of the water resources. All these aspects are also the negative aspect of agriculture and uh, farming so and fish industry also. So keep that also in your mind. Other alternate livelihood options. The IT has revolutionized many sectors in the Indian economy. There is a broad consensus that IT can play a critical role in achieving sustainable development and food security in the 21st century. Governments can predict areas of food insecurity and vulnerability using appropriate information and software tools so that action can be taken to prevent or reduce the likelihood of an emergency. It also has a positive impact on the agriculture sector as it can disseminate information regarding emerging, emerging technologies and its application. Though IT is by itself no catalyst to change, but it can act as a tool for releasing the creative potential and knowledge embedded in the society. It also has the potential of employment generation in rural areas. For example, Soho Corporation. Soho Corporation is another uh, private company that is uh, employing people from rural areas into their firm. Okay, that is another example. Sustainable development and organic farming. Okay, now another aspect is sustainable development and organic farming. In the recent years, awareness of the harmful effect of chemical-based fertilizers and pesticides in our health is on the rise. Conventional agricultural uh, agriculture relies heavily on chemical fertilizers and toxic pesticides, etc., which enter the food supply, penetrate the water sources, harm the livestock, deplete the soil, and devastate natural ecosystems. So there are a lot of harmful effects from the conventional uh, chemical fertilizers. So, uh, what? Uh, so, in order to tackle that, organic farming it should be encouraged. So, we are looking at the benefits of organic farming. Okay, organic agriculture offers a means to substitute costlier agriculture inputs such as high yield variety of seeds, chemical fertilizers, pesticides, etc. with locally produced organic inputs that are cheaper and thereby generate good returns on investments. Organic culture also, uh, agriculture also generates income through exports as the demand for organically grown crops is on the rise, especially in the western countries. Okay. Studies across countries have shown that organically grown food has more nutritional value than chemical farming thus providing us with healthy foods. Since organic farming requires more, than, more labor input than conventional farming, India will find organic farming an attractive proposition. Finally, the produce is pesticide free and produced in an environmentally sustainable way. Okay, popularizing organic farming requires awareness and willingness on the part of the farmers to adapt to the new technology. Some of the farmers they uh, focus on uh, what focus on the returns, so uh, that can be an issue. So all these are the aspects that are related to what rural development in India. So recap: rural development is a is quite a comprehensive term but it is essentially means a plan of action for the development of rural areas which are lagging behind socio-economic development there is a need for improving the quantity and quality of infrastructure in rural areas such as banking marketing storage transport and communications etc to realize its true potential so infrastructure development should be there quality infrastructure development should be there Diversification towards new areas such as livestock, fisheries and other non-agriculture activities is necessary not only in to reduce the risk from agriculture sector but also to provide productive sustainable livelihood options to our rural people. Importance of organic farming as an environmentally sustainable production process is on the rise and needs to be promoted. So these are the things that we learned today on rural development. Okay, So I hope the class was productive. Uh, until we see again, God bless you all. Jai Hind.